Stay tuned to Cardinal Television. Commotion's coming up next. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the holiday edition of Commotion, St. John Fisher's pop culture debate show here on Cardinal Television. And I'm your host, Rob Sweet. The rules of Commotion are as follows. I will offer up topics of discussion for our three panelists to debate, question, or even argue about with each other. At the end of the program, the panelist who has offered the best arguments throughout the show will be declared the winner. If you're asking yourself how the winner will be decided, look no further. They are chosen by none other than myself, the hostess with the mostest. But what does being the winner of commotion have to offer, you may also be asking? Well, the winner will be offered 30 seconds of face time to talk about whatever is on their mind. So let me introduce you to our panelists today. First we have James Bailey, a two-time commotion champion. Congratulations on that. You're going to make it 3 P today? Absolutely. Love you guys. <laughs> and next up, we have Caitlin Murphy, an unofficial and unrecognized commotion champion <clears throat> from our lost episode that never aired. And uh, you want to make it official, huh? Yeah. You're going to yeah. do it? Two yeah. Time. I'm going to be a three time champion this time. <laughs> and then we have uh, Nick Ferguson, who's never been champion. Nope. Ever. The winning streak starts now. Never won anything. Nick, huh? Now it starts. <laughs> now it starts. Forever. <laughs> Okay, but not to worry. Yes, today it could all change, Nick, because we're going to let the show begin and let the commotion begin. And for our first topic, being that this is the holiday season, I have to throw the question out. What is the best Christmas present you've ever received? Nick, we'll start with you. Were you a good child as a, uh, growing up? I was an excellent child, I'm not going to lie. So you didn't get any charcoal? No charcoal, never. I don't believe that, but what no. is the best present you've ever well, gotten? Well, I've gotten a lot it? of good presents in my life, and I was pondering this idea all day, but I finally come to it. The best present I've ever received was this um, kind of cool like Stegosaurus-themed fossil kit. Because when I was a kid, I was really into dinosaurs. I'm still into dinosaurs, they're awesome. Oh, Especially yeah? st Stegosauruses, Stegosauri. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, and you had to, like, um, brush away the dirt and all these other things. And it was just really cool because you could, like, find these, like, little mini um, stegosaurus bones. And it was just cool. I had that probably, I think I might still have it to this very day, to be fair. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, that's kind of cool. I mean, I probably would have been playing with actual dinosaur toys but uh, and probably been making fun of you. You know, but I had dinosaur toys, too. I just didn't get those for Christmas. <laughs> Caitlin, what is the best <clears throat> Christmas present you've ever got? I think actually, and I got it only about five years ago, so I was a little older, but um, I had always wanted pet birds, and my parents decided I was finally responsible enough for my own pet. Oh, wow. So I got two little finches named Sammy and Percy, and I still have them to this day. Wow, from previous, previously alive creatures to actual <laughs> living creatures. <laughs> How could you top that, James? Um, well, you know, I was a pretty self-motivated person, person, and um, so my seventh, seventh grade year, um, I had, had had a bike, but it kind of uh, sucked, and I got a brand new like bike that was like great. So I was at, so I lived like about three miles away from my high school, and that's where a lot of stuff took place. So I biked myself over there for so so many like workouts and all this, and um, you know, like extracurricular activities, stuff like that. So um, that was really beneficial to me. So I liked that a lot. My most memorable Christmas is probably the one when um, I, I wanted. I wanted an Xbox 360 so bad, and um, I went downstairs for Christmas. And I saw the I saw a box wrapped up that looked just like it. I was all excited, and I unwrapped it, and it was a Wii. I was like, Oh, oh no! <laughs> so close, but so far away. <laughs> Not the same thing. That no, wasn't the same thing. It, I, you know, it's still it's the Wii's gonna be timeless. So I think it, for in the long term, probably still a good Christmas present. But oh, excellent. Well, your guys' presents are fine, but you know you're not gonna like remember them in a few years. There's they go past Sammy and Percy. Men are literally alive. They are literally alive. They're also named after the Buffalo Bills, oddly. Sammy Watkins and Percy Harvin, which is odd. But um, Caitlin, are they still alive? Yeah. Oh, wow. Those are ancient birds. That's, like, that's, that's a gift that keeps on giving. That is. Yeah. If fact. only they made little birds. Yeah, Nick, do you still play with your dinosaurs? Yeah. I do. I can still use my bike when I go home. I just, I my, my brother... My, my brother he actually has a car now too, but he, he can use it too. And my dinosaurs it was, it can be passed down from generation to generation, sir. It was very good though. It was very nice. I can probably. It was very nice. Like I'm probably gonna pass it down to my kids. Yeah, yeah. but your bike's probably gone. Well, your mom and dad probably threw it away. It's great. Ooh. It's a great. Oh, that, it's, it's that is mean. You don't know my dad. My dad doesn't throw anything away. No, no, no more bike. 
Ooh, well, guys, <laughs> I mean, it's heating up a little bit, so why don't we move on to our next topic? Uh, Christmas, of course, being right around the corner, and with Christmas comes the barrage of Christmas movies on television. So, Caitlin, we'll start with you. What is your favorite Christmas film? I have to go with the classic. I grew up obsessed with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and I watched like the old claymation one oh, they always have yeah. on to this day. I love that movie. Oh, it's a fixture on TV right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, un unbelievable. They had the Frosty the Snowman ones too. Like I used to watch the whole line of them. Mm -hmm. James? Um, yeah, I mean, there's all the classic ones, but I like one that's came out during my lifetime, um, the Polar Express. Um, oh. I, I love, I mean, I, I think I was in second or third grade when that came out, um, and I, mean, I remember seeing it. I, I've seen it so many times. That's the, the, the CGI one? Uh, yeah, with Tom Hanks, stuff like that. Um, I've always, I mean, I've always liked it. You know, I, that was like the, always the go-to when I was in elementary school, like, what, that's what they're going to show you for Christmas. And so, I mean, I, it brings back a lot of good memories of childhood. Oh, very heartwarming film, yeah. Wow. Nicholas, Saint Nicholas. Mine is the definitive. I like It's a Wonderful Life. Oh. There's no better. It's the true classic. I watch it every year. I watch it multiple times a year. It's another it's just, TV fixture one. Yeah, I mean it's always on. So you, though I love Rudolph and I love them all, it's hard to pick one definitive one. But I can pick, and it is It's a Wonderful Life for me. Oh, interesting. Well, those are all like very nice and heartwarming ones. Mine are probably on the goofy side. I've got two favorites. I can't decide. I grew up with one, and one in you know past decade or so is tied it. And uh, I have to go with National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> Solid. It's the one I grew up with. And then Elf. Oh, oh I, mean, I forgot about Elf. Elf, guys. I like Elf. Elf is Not my great. favorite, but still. I do Elf, respect Elf. Elf. It's yeah, a solid Elf is, choice. Elf is goofy. I like Elf a lot. I can watch it's Elf close. all year round. I, yeah, you can watch Elf. I mean, I think I think I like Polar Express because it gets, gets me such in the Christmas mood. But yeah, I think Elf, I always, Elf is a great I movie, though. I always lose it right when he gets his dad the lingerie set. <laughs> yeah, that's such a great, movie. <laughs> such a great movie. And then you gotta also you gotta you gotta look at uh, what about the Christmas uh, story? Oh yeah. Ralphie, yep. the uh, all that you know. The, the, oh, come on, guys. There's so that, many good ones. There are so many good ones. But I actually have a question, Caitlin. Did you watch Rudolph last night? I did not watch Rudolph oh. last night. I had prior. I mean, if it's your favorite it movie, was on last yeah, night. if it's your favorite one, how can you not see it? I mean, kind of makes it like I don't know if you really like that one Are the you best. Accusing me of lying about my favorite I don't know if you're accusing. I just don't know if you like it as much as you say you like I it. Do you know, like it's, it's, it's hard I, enough. I, to I watched yourself. it, and it's not even my favorite. You did say you That's always great. catch it when it's yeah, on. You all, TV. Obviously, it'll be on again. You know what? Adulthood sucks. What can I say? It'll be on again. I, I made time. I mean, you you bring up a good point, Nicholas. I made time. I mean. Well, you know what? I'll be sure to watch Christmas Story the whole, you know, 27 times it's shown between uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And so maybe there'll be a more opportunities to watch Rudolph, mm -hmm. huh? And Frosty. And all those good ones. And every yes. other one. And every other one. They're all okay. Great. Well, we got to take a commercial <laughs> break, so don't go away or else you'll get charcoal in your stocking. I promise. It will happen. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mm, Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got? Or C, show solidarity? Thank you, babe. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back to Commotion, and we have no holiday humbugs around here, just a bunch of jolly old women and men. <laughs> All right, so some people think like the holiday season is like this elongated event. Uh, I mean, even before Thanksgiving, Christmas was <coughs> unleashed in full force. Christmas decorations have been on sale since October, and there are entire radio stations dedicated to playing carols 24 hours a day, on, all up until New Year's, really. Uh, do you think that we're dragging Christmas out too long? I'm starting with James on this one. I, and I know Nick's going to disagree with this, but I, I think it is absolutely too long. Um, when you devote a sixth of the year, at least, to just one holiday, I think it takes away from what it makes it special, you know? And I, I like the Christmas, I like Christmas time and stuff like that, but um, it was in the 70s in November this year, you know? It just doesn't feel right to be thinking about Christmas during that time. So yeah. I think that it's definitely... I think it's too long, and I mean, there's a lot of great things to appreciate about Christmas, but I think, like, like for me, like, like the day Thanksgiving is over or December 1st, that's when the Christmas season should really start kicking into gear, and right. I think that still gives you plenty of time to really appreciate the holiday and really appreciate the season. 
Well, and the matter of fact is, I feel like they're only elongating it because they're commercializing it. Oh, definitely. Like, it really wouldn't be this long if it didn't make them so much money because they want to say, oh, you can get your Christmas deals now, so shop now or get your decorations now. And it's kind of taking away from the fact that it's supposed to be a family holiday. It's like, get it yeah. before everybody else, but we're trying to get everybody to do it now. Yeah. So who are they trying to fool? It's not going to stop me from doing all my shopping the day they're, before. They're fooling people like Nicholas over here. Well, Rob, brethren and sistren, <laughs> um, <laughs> many people know me as a Christmas freak. However, on a serious note, I don't think that there's anything wrong with Christmas season being dragged out this long. I love Christmas, as everyone knows. And I think Christmas starts at a perfect time. Like, I start right on November 1st. And yeah. I don't see the problem with dragging out because Christmas is like a time of like giving and loving and caring and all these other wonderful things. And with how the world is today, there's not enough of that. So to stretch out and get maybe as much time of that as you can, I say it's worth it. But the same, maybe it's a if, little if, annoying. If, if, they would if they were doing that, but they're doing it's all the advertising, like the commercialized stuff is what's dragged out. It's not like they're like, okay, spend time for your with your family and, for the next. And the months. other th and the other thing, Nick, is <clears> like it's not bringing people together. The biggest story that happened, like like I think right around now is when the Christmas like season should be starting. The only stuff we've heard about before this is like the Starbucks scandal. Like you don't hear good things. How horrible Black Friday is. Like good things don't happen before like the Christmas season really should start. Well, it doesn't matter what the media covers, in my opinion, because just think back like. When you were a kid, you didn't care about what the news said and all that. This stuff could have been happening ten years ago. But when but we were, no, no, that, but, no, no. but it doesn't but mean it wasn't happening. Nick. But that's because you didn't pay attention. Like the I individual didn't... people that just like hang out and love Christmas with their families and their friends. That's what makes it worth it, and for that's why Christmas months? Christmas should start immediately on November first, in my opinion. It, it did for Nick. Like Nick was yeah, the I was Christmas ready for Christmas, Christmas at midnight on November first yes. wow. too. And it's I mean I know it's so weird. It's extreme. And it may be it excessive, extreme. but I love Christmas that much that it's worth it for me that it starts that early. People are dying on Black Fridays now. Yeah. People uh, are getting trampled to death. Those people shouldn't be going to the stores. I understand what you're saying. Nick, you know what? It's very noble. I don't go to the, the, the store Black Friday. The spirit of Christmas honestly should be all year round. Yes. I mean, loving, caring, all that stuff. <laughs> but yes, it is the but commercialization because, we are oversaturated with. It's but exhausting. it's such a, like a, in the big scheme of things, two months, there's 12 months in the year, two months is not that big of a deal. But I think it could be devoted to Christmas and people could enjoy it for and entire, have a nice time. But it's not them having a nice time, that's what we're saying. The part that's being dragged out is the commercialization, the capitalism, the yeah. buy this, buy this. If you're not spending $500, you're not doing it right. It's, well, bringing out like, the it's bringing out the stress that you have to do all this right now. No, I mean, you could appreciate the commercialization without having to you can't, there's all, What are you appreciating? Like you can watch, like, what are you the, appreciating? Like, do you tell me when you see the Coke commercial with the polar bears that that doesn't like give you a I actually haven't seen that yet this year. Well, yeah, you're going to yeah. and they're going to be wonderful and I have seen them three times. But, I, I, just, um, I think it's too I much. I think it's too like much. It. Just because they're advertising doesn't compel okay. me to go out and buy. I'm not you a robot. Get, you would get like, tired oh my of God, Bell I have Susan's to go out and buy. So long. It, you, you would. It's just, you no, get, it's I love tiring. Christmas. Christmas is never tiring. tiring. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is Christmas perfect. is the greatest season and um, greatest time of the year. You're about to That's get why very holiday like <laughs> Nick, right now. You're getting very <laughs> not holiday like So let's move on. Obviously, we're talking about the holiday season, which also includes New Year's as well. It goes past Christmas. So uh, my question is, what is all y'all's 2016 New Year's resolutions? Caitlin? I personally don't usually do resolutions. I'm trying to change that because now I'm going to be getting into my last semester of junior year. I have to start thinking about jobs and careers. So my New Year's resolution is to get all of my ducks in a row to make sure that I have something to do after college. Hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's a pretty good thing. You know, it's it's killing two birds with one stone. You got to do that anyway. Mm -hmm. you might as well make it a resolution, right? Yeah. Nick, you got anything lined up? My resolution is just to be more patient. To be fair, I get frustrated <laughs> really quickly and stressed out of a lot of stuff. As we saw no. the last no. Christmas thing, the viewers at home saw that. Yeah, as they saw. So my goal is to try, hence try, to be more patient in this upcoming year. I'm gonna try to listen to what people say, and even when I disagree with them to the death, I will. Try to listen to them and tolerance. Not, tolerance, yes. That's tolerance is good. That's what the holiday season's about. Yes, it's what the holiday season's all about. James, you've got a good one, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, like it's pretty cliche. It's kind of a cliche one, but um, you know, back in I used to like work out a lot, and then back in August, like mid-August, I was like, I'll just take a couple weeks off, and that couple weeks has turned into. I still haven't gone back to the gym yet. I feel that. Yeah, I feel yeah that. so I, I uh, actually restructured my schedule for next semester, so I don't I don't have any morning classes, so I can devote my mornings to this like. I don't have a, I don't have like an excuse anymore, so I'm gonna probably start like working out again and, and trying to get back into a little bit better shape. So yeah, good that's good for you. Yeah, I mean, hey, if you've worked out before, it's only gonna take a oh, yeah. not a matter of time until you're right back on there. You know, 
Well, that's good. I mean, not very original on his part, but Ooh. you know. Really? I mean, yeah. Yours isn't, even, yours isn't even a real one. Mine be more real. patient. I guarantee you're not gonna be more patient. I'm gonna like try. I'm that's just like a that's like a theory. Right here, no, that's a that's a that's like a theory. You're not no. gonna see results for this. I will see results. I'm gonna see results for this. You, you, you see I'll results? Take, like let's listen to John. Like we could bring John on right yeah, now. Like bring, yeah. the results happen. Okay. You know. Well, I mean, that's another story for another time. But um, you're not acting very Christmas like. We're right sorry, now. John. It's very Christmas time. Hello, John. <laughs> You know, I, I, I give John a lot of credit. He might talk, he might talk about his diet and all that sort of John stuff a lot, but he's definitely he's done what he said he was going to do, and I applaud him for that. Folks, I applaud John too. We're talking about John DeMuro, CTV member, just in case you don't know. It is not <laughs> about the greatest social media manager in the history of CTV. <laughs> it is about you coming up with the most okay, cliche. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> it is pretty cliche. Right, right, That's right. what I want to do. Okay, Kayla. Okay, Kayla. There are billions of New Year's resolutions, and I think that what we should do is just tailor them to each other, and whatever is the most effective for our individual selves is a good New Year's resolution. You have a good resolution, Taylor? I couldn't have said that better myself. <laughs> Thank God for a woman on this uh, panel, because <laughs> we need to simmer down there, guys. I mean... <laughs> It's getting agree. very commotional. Okay. Nick's, very Nick's, commotional. Nick's already falling behind his New Year's re resolution. <laughs> New Year's hasn't started yet. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But Christmas has been around first. for months. Christmas <laughs> has been around since November 1st. One month. Okay, well, part of our New Year's resolution is to come back from commercial breaks with a vengeance. So you're not going to want to miss what we've got coming up. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Miles, and you're watching Cardinal Television. And we're back on Commotion. We're going to get a little bit off topic, away from the holidays, and uh, talk about a few other topical situations we've got going on. Uh, Time Magazine announces their 2015 Person of the Year on December 7th. Malala Yousafzai was the early frontrunner, although she's being challenged by a wide range of people, from recording artists like Drake, Adele, and Taylor Swift, presidential nominees such as Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, and Hillary Clinton, French President Francois Hollande, and even <coughs> Kim Kardashian. <laughs> who, in your opinion, should be Person of the Year in 2015? Nick, who should it be? Well, I went on the website and I looked through all 59 choices. Wow, really? There's a lot of choices. American Pharaoh, the horse, is a choice, which is surprising. <laughs> Interesting. That's not a person. No. Yeah, that was weird. So, and, uh, since that's one of the choices, but my choice, even though it's not necessarily one person, is the Syrian refugees. Oh, very The nice Syrian here. refugees are on there. They've been a huge topic this entire year. Yeah. A lot of people have both good things and bad things to say about them, and it's not like best person of the year, because in the past, Hitler's won. I'm not saying that these people are Hitler at all, because that's not what I'm trying to say. Yeah. It, these are great people, the majority of them, and it just, it just shows, I don't know, I really think they deserve it, because it shows how, how tough they are as a people. Because you can't, it's hard to pick up your like entire life and move. So I just think that that's really admirable. And I really like to think that they should be the choice for this year. Because just they have gone through a lot of hardship this year. And they deserve to be recognized for something other than having the news argue whether they're terrorists or good people or whether we should be accepting them or not. Just recognize them for the good. important year that's been. Good for you for giving them that platform there. Caitlin, what about you? Um, I actually, ironically, agreed with Nick on that. I think the refugees. But I have a kind of a split between who I want to see as um, the person of the year, the refugees, and who I honestly believe would get it based on, because the person of the year is based on, like you said, it's not always a good person. It's who's ever influenced our world the most in that year. And because of that, I wouldn't be shocked to see the ISIS leader, because because of ISIS, there's the refugee crisis, because of ISIS, all these security measures we have today. Like, mm -hmm. for 2015, they've really influenced, for the worst, of course, but influenced our world the most. Would it perhaps give them a little bit more power if we did That's that? That's the issue with it, too. That's why I would hope they would pick, like, the refugees, or even Francois Hollande, because I really liked his message about despite the Paris attacks, he accepted refugees because as he said, France is a country of freedom. He's not going to let fear overcome his country. Absolutely. And uh, James, I hope you don't have any fear in giving us your 2015. Yeah, I mean, that was the best person of the year was Donald Trump. Great guy. <laughs> there we go. No, just wanted to give Caitlin like an in there. Oh, you're, um, you're fired from this panel. What are you no, but um, <laughs> you know, Nick just made fun of American Pharaoh. But, um, you know, they've been going with a lot of non-traditional. I mean, like refugees would be a non-traditional. And um, the fact that he was the first horse in 37 years to win the Triple Crown 
and that he also won the Breeders' Cups, so kind of won the Grand Slam, which has never been done in horse racing before. I mean, that's sure. pretty, that's kind of an impressive thing in its own right when you look at it compared to like when you can like can you can compare it to like other comparable things. So I think that that. I mean, I had all that, like, I don't really care a lot about horse racing, but I cared a lot about American Pharaoh. And so from, from looking at it from that perspective, I think that it was a very, I think that it was a very impressive year. And, you know, I think the Time Magazine is trying to shake it up a little bit. And um, I think that all these would be shaken up a little bit, uh, no matter who they pick out of who we said. But um, I think that picking a horse would definitely be an interesting thing and something they could, def they could definitely do um, as a stunt. But I also think, I mean, I think the horse also deserves it, too. Yeah. It would just be weird to see a horse, a time person of the year, and then no, no, a horse. A horse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I it was it was up for athlete of the year for like an ESPYs and something like that. I too. Like, it's, it's been up for like other awards and stuff like that. It's like, like what category are you gonna put it in? I mean, because it's That's true. it's an, it's I mean it's a it's a very impressive horse. If Mr. Ed wasn't gonna get it 50 years ago, <laughs> I don't know about that. But uh, okay, so last Friday. Uh, Robert Deere opened fire on a Colorado Springs Planned Parenthood clinic, killing three, wounding 11. Since his arrest, there has been criticism of the media describing him as a lone gunman or an odd yet quiet man who nobody thought would do this, like, you know, the typical things. Uh, critics say that he should be <coughs> called a domestic terrorist. Do you believe this was an act of domestic terrorism? And should Deere be labeled as such, James? Uh, I think it was domestic terrorism. Um, I think that's. I think that if it was, I mean, not to be offended. Mean, I think it was if someone that was brown or Muslim or something like that. You know, like that's just what it would be. Um, you know, the quote, the quote George Carlin: "If they're they're brown, bomb them and and, and bring them down." And um, I think that's exactly what the what the thing here. I think it's definitely a racial thing, and why he's not being called a a, um, a terrorist. And I think that you know, when 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 someone goes out of their way to go ahead and just um, take out another group of people for reasons like this. I think that it definitely is terrorism, and um, you know, it's a whole different topic. What I think about Planned Parenthood, but um, I think that if we're just talking about, should it be called terrorism? Yes, absolutely, um, Caitlin. I think absolutely because the general definition of terrorism is using violence and fear to push your own political gains, and the entire reason that he killed three innocent people was he watched these videos talking about how apparently Planned Parenthood was selling baby parts on the black market and those months <coughs> ago were ruled as edited and falsified. But because he watched this and apparently he believes that you can still be pro-life and kill people, he decided to go in and make a political statement through violence and that's exactly what a terrorist does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Nick, you... Uh... I mean, I agree with the other two that it's definitely a form of domestic terrorism. Despite what people think about Planned Parenthood, I know um, the political spectrum is a little divided on certain parts of that. But he was targeting them. He's targeting a specific group, the plan like Planned Parenthood and everything that they have to stand for. And it just... He's absolutely a terrorist. It's domestic terrorism. is just... It, there's no other way to describe it. Really. Yeah, and it, it really was his medium. Um, mm -hmm you know, um, the medium and the message, all that sort of stuff from communication. But, um, you know, I, I mean, his message of being pro-life, um, you can't be anti that, but the, obviously the way he the way he went about it, he can't just go around killing people. Right. So um, it is kind of ironic that, that, that a pro-life person would do that. But um, at the same time, I mean, it's not like Planned Parenthood is the, the greatest organization anyways, so. Yeah, but besides the point, you don't, you don't put harm <laughs> upon others. I mean, if that's the message, the message is we just, we shouldn't be hurting each other. Mm -hmm. All right, let's lighten the mood up, guys. This is the holiday episode. Let's get to a real matter of debate. With Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens premiering an early opening night of December 17th, many have speculated on some of the rumors running rampant about the highly anticipated film. So this begs the question, do you think Luke Skywalker has gone to the dark side? Is he Rylo Ken? Are we starting with me? Nick, we have to start with you. You look eager to. So, everyone who knows me, I also I love Christmas, but I also love Star Wars. And I've debated this within my own head and with everyone I know because that's just how I am numerous times. And Luke Skywalker is not right, or Kylo Ren, and he has not gone to the dark side. I was thought about this way too much. He could not have gone to the dark side. He was so adamant in, five in, or in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. I just don't think he could do it, and to be fair, it just it wouldn't. It just would be so weird. I don't think he can do it. I Kylo mean, Ren seems obsessed with Darth Vader. Kylo Ren is obsessed with Darth Vader, but I don't think that. Perhaps, 
Perhaps he wanted to master my thing the is, Force by learning all parts of the Force. I feel that Luke is a very Obi-Wan Kenobi type individual now. Because also, as we saw in um, Episode 6, he also has like the spirits of um, Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Yoda. All there, like, telling him what to do, or not telling him what to do, but giving helping him, him guidance. Helping him out. Yeah, giving him guidance. And I think, th I think they would have been there to help him not go to the dark side. I just... Luke Skywalker was such like a noble character that I can't see him going to the dark and side. And that's why it would be absolutely dramatic and and It would a be a dramatic turn. and absolutely like if it comes out I'd be like, wow, I was completely surprised. Kaylin. But I just don't think it is. I think he is antagonist, but in a way that we're not all thinking of. Because we have to remember that the um, protagonist of this one really starts out as a stormtrooper. And I was seeing on the thing that he's part of the order where they give them all this propaganda that Luke is what destroyed the Empire. So he may be an antagonist in this case. At the beginning, Luke's a bad person because we're seeing it from a stormtrooper's point of view rather than a Jedi's point of view. But I also think that uh, Finn, I believe his name is? Yes. Yeah. yes. I think Finn learns differently because as we've seen in the trailers, he's wielding a lightsaber and... Luke Skywalker is the only Jedi left living, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. Well, so well, who yeah, else would be able to mentor him? Leia's around yeah, this is six She's got years the later. force flowing within her. Yeah, I just don't think... I think he's going to be an antagonist, but I don't believe he's going to be Kylo Ren. I think it's going to be one of the switches. However, I do think he is going to die in this movie. Ooh, that's a bold statement right there. James, you got, you got anything to offer to the Star Wars? James doesn't watch Star, Star Wars. Star Wars sucks. Oh, oh no. here we go. Who that's cares about Star Wars? You haven't okay. even watched like A Wonderful well. Life. How can you like be the master critic of movies over here? <laughs> I just, I haven't, I haven't seen them. No, I don't care about Star Wars at all. Um, I would like to see Luke Skywalker be Kylo Ren because it would make the story better. But then again, I don't know who Luke Skywalker and Kylo Ren really even are. So... <laughs> Okay, okay. Our, final, our final point of topic is Star Wars related. Who shot first, Han or Greedo? Han. 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 No, 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 no. no. Greedo, shot first. Greedo shot first in the 1997 yeah, one. I that literally watched one. Greedo, the original 1977 Greedo one, shot. Han shot first. Okay. Greedo, Greedo never Greedo even Greedo shot. shot. Yeah, Greedo did not shoot first. Greedo's a great. Greedo's in shot first. In the original no. format, yeah, which is original how one. you should... Greedo shot first. It. In the 1970s, Han, Han shot, shot first. first. Han, Han shot, shot first. first. In the original. You, Han have you watched? I mean, I've seen first. the horrible footage because I mean, Star Wars looks like frame horrible. by frame. It was made in the 70s. So, what did you expect? Exactly. Why does it matter then? It's a terrible movie. It Han matters shot because oh, of the characterization of Han Solo in the 1977. Oh my God, you sound like an English Han. teacher. Well, that's funny because I'm an English minor. Well, that's. <laughs> It's okay. annoying. I okay. guess, that so, so Han sits there, he gets shot at, doesn't even flinch, and, the, and Greedo's the worst shooter in the history of the galaxy? Yeah, I mean, exactly. come on. I didn't know exactly. it, was it changes the character, the, the character depictions. It changes the narrative of who Han Solo is if he doesn't take that first shot. And yes, it's the character arc of Han Solo that he goes through from the beginning of the trilogy to the end to become a noble man. In the beginning, he is not a noble man. Mm -hmm. You realize we're talking all about fake stuff that didn't actually happen. That's much like what the Republicans talk about. <laughs> <laughs> the Tony Reali paper toss? If you really want to get down with it. Okay, well, that does it. That's all the time we have for today. Which also means it's time for me to crown a new commotion champion for the final episode of this semester. All three panelists did their best, but only one can win. So... What we've all been waiting for, our winner is, well, James, you disqualified yourself with the Star Wars thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Caitlin, Nick, Caitlin, you are not the winner. I'm sorry. Yes. Nick, <laughs> you are actually a champion. I am a champion. You are a commotion champion. So proud. How Woo! much did you pay Robbie for the show? Paid him absolutely nothing. <laughs> all right. Congratulations. You now have 30 seconds to rant and rave about whatever you want. But first, we need to remind our viewers that you can catch this and all our other programming here on CD CTV at Time Warner Cable Channel 12. So, uh, Nick, <laughs> it's time to get commotional, buddy. I'm just saying. Okay, I know you guys probably, because you probably know me a little bit at this point, know that I should, will probably be bragging about myself, but I'm going to change it up this time. I'm going to be bragging about all these people here with me. See, this has been a great um, semester of CTV. This has been the best semester I've done in three and a half years. This has been the most successful we've been. I've been working with like probably my best friends here at school. All these people have worked really, really hard. 
And I just, it's been a great semester. And Rob, you've been a great host for the show. And take us home. Thank you, sir. All right. I would, <laughs> I'd like to offer a little, uh, little bit of FaceTime for myself because this is the last show I'll be broadcasting here at St. John Fisher. Uh, I am graduating this semester. So um, I'd like to say that it's been a great run. I've uh, done uh, lots of programs here, including Fisher News, uh, some short films that have aired, uh, some programming that's not aired because it's been too controversial. Um, but uh, it's been a blast. I also would like to thank uh, Nick Ferguson, Caitlin Murphy, James Bailey, you guys on the eboard, um, for actually making this semester like really fun. This is the most fun I've ever had doing this show here at CTV. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, John DeMuro. Um, it catches blockbuster movie minutes. They're actually entertaining, and I get a lot of uh, compliments <laughs> about them. And, it's weird, uh, right? And most of all, I want to thank Cecil Felton, because Ooh, without Cecil. him, this club would not be what it is. And uh, that guy uh, busts his behind to make everything work around here and uh, deserves all the credit in the world. So without his leadership, we could not do this. Um, I'd just like to thank you all, uh, and uh, I'll catch you all down the road. <laughs>